Yo, what's up, guys? It's BP, and it looks like season two of Invincible is finally upon us. It has been announced, and I'm here to just talk about this thing that's been going in, in and out of my mind for ever since the uh, first season ended about everyone's favorite horrible human being. Yeah, that's right, Amber. Yes, this is another video on the internet about Amber. There are plenty of videos out there talking about how what a piece of shit human being she is, but mine's gonna be a little bit different as it's more about, yeah, I'll reflect on season one, but it's more about going forward from here and my sort of concerns about this horrible, horrible character. But first, let me uh, let me talk, let me contextualize my, my uh, relationship with Invincible. I started reading the comic at least 10 years ago. I read it online because I was in, I'm in Japan, right? So I couldn't get the physical copy. So I'd read it online. And I was reading it as it was coming out. Like I started reading it about 10 years ago, but it had originally come out when I was in my last year of high school. So I didn't start reading it until a little significantly after that. But it was still being, it was still coming out. Robert Kirkman was still writing it. And I remember just being, it was so annoying because he was doing that and the Walking Dead comic at the same time. And the Walking Dead was the more popular one and his main focus. And so the comic book would get delayed all the fucking time. It was agonizing. Like you'd have one month, you get it. And then two months later, three, you get another issue. It was horrible. Anyway, I've been a fan of this series for a long time. It's actually, I would probably consider it my favorite sort of superhero comic, right? Because it's, it paid homage to the, the superhero comics that came before it, but also did its own thing. And I remember when they announced the animated series and I was excited. And then I saw Amber's character design and I immediately knew I was like, oh, fuck no. Oh, no. Now, disclaimer, although this shouldn't even fucking matter. My, this shouldn't affect how people view my opinion at all. But you can't see me, but I am, in fact, black. And when I saw Amber got turned into a black woman, I was like, oh, fuck. So from that moment, I've hated the character. Ever since she even, like debuted in the TV show, I was like, fuck this bitch. Because they race swapped her and I hate that shit. But more than that, I knew when I saw that they were going to race swap her, I said, well, now she's going to be a strong, independent black woman who don't need no man. Mm -hmm. I knew that was going to happen because these people can't help themselves. In, in pushing sort of the, uh, the message, as Critical Drinker likes to call it, they somehow become even more racist and stereotype the black woman. I knew they were gonna give her like, I was like, oh, so you're gonna be more inclusive by stereotyping a black, the black woman while destroying her character. I knew that was coming and that was exactly what they did. When William's like, oh, she's into fourth wave feminism and Ta-Nehisi Coates, I was like, oh, fuck. Because, well, Ta-Nehisi Coates, right? Who the, oh, oh God. A oh, funny thing about William, right? They pretty much axed a significant portion of his character development as well because he later came out as gay. He realized he was gay later. So that was sort of a character arc for him. He even dated Eve. Yes, there are going to be spoilers in this conversation. He even dated Eve at one point and then later came out as gay and realized he was gay. So they just completely like, in order to have the, the gay character right at the beginning, they completely axed a significant portion of his character development. But anyway, back to the bitch. I knew when I was like, oh, they're going to ruin this, this woman's character, right? And I've seen all the arguments. Oh, you know, comic book Amber was just a doormat or she was stupid. And I'm like, no, she wasn't. Y'all are just fucking idiots. She was just nice, normal high school girl. In particularly, high school girl from early 2000s into mid 2000s, right? She was just a normal high school girl doing normal high school girl things who happened to be dating a superhero there was nothing wrong with her. She wasn't stupid or anything like that. She was just a normal girl. And the idea that if you race swap her, that you can't keep her personality, it's just nice, normal girl. It's like, well, we race swapped her. So now we have to make her more because, you know, she can't just be black and normal. No, no, no. That, that She got to be strong and powerful and don't take no mess and don't need no man. It was, it just frustrated the hell out of me when I saw that. And then it was confirmed when the show aired. If they had kept her, they race swapped her, but kept her the same, I'd have less of an issue with it, but I still fucking hate the fact that they race swapped her. I hate the fact that they race swapped Debbie, but at least Debbie is essentially maintaining her character. They haven't really changed Debbie's character. And it's kind of funny. It's so racist because they're like, oh, Debbie's voiced by an Asian woman. Therefore, we have to make her Asian. And you're like, it, it's a voice. You, you mean to tell me that Asian people can't voice Asian, like, like non-Asian characters? Someone, someone better tell the Japanese that. that and then, because, what's it? Because Zazie, however you pronounce her name, Zazie Beats 
is Amber, that they had to race swap her. They made Amber blacker than Zazie Beetz is. That woman's father is German, right? It would have been more accurate to make Amber half black because that's what Zazie Beetz is. But of course, you know, Hollywood is about as racist as it gets because it's like the one drop rule, right? You know, that's why, you know, Zendaya, Zazie Beetz, and those types are black, even though you're like, mm they are they are black but also not and so looking forward at season two i have a sneaking suspicion because seth rogan this piece of shit is, is an executive producer on this show that they are going to extend her shelf life well beyond her shelf life in the comic so once things start getting galactic amber and william become pretty much irrelevant into the story they just have to be because there's nothing they can really do they serve their part in the part of the story that mat that mattered at that point and then they sort of disappear that makes sense but i have a sneaking suspicion that they aren't gonna do that. Especially, like, it's one thing if they took the backlash that they received between season one and season two and went, oh, fuck, people hate Amber. Let's put her more back on her comic book path or at least fix her, right? We gotta fix this. Maybe, you know, it'll be different, but I have a sneaking suspicion that they're not gonna do that. Everyone else is a racist and a sexist and a, all that stuff. They're all wrong. We're all wrong for feeling this way about Amber and they're just gonna keep her going, right? There's no way the strong black woman who don't need no man and don't take no mess is gonna just disappear. I think they're gonna extend her and Mark out for as long as they possibly can, possibly fucking up the story. And again, I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong, but I have a sneaking suspicion that that's what they're gonna do because these people can't fucking help themselves, right? They can't, they can't help themselves. At the end of the day, this character isn't Amber, right? That's that's the main problem is that if you take a character, not only do you change their race, but then you just completely change their personality, that's not the character, right? If you take Peter Parker and change everything about him, then it's not Peter Parker anymore, even if he has spider powers. And I kind of wonder, can, I don't know, can anyone, can you see this happening? Assuming they don't do anything with her and they keep her the way she is. Can you imagine? So later on in the series, after they have broken up, Amber dates a guy that beats her. Mark finds out. And of course, Mark is about, is enraged, right? He's basically about to Omni-Man this guy, but she asks him not to do that. Can you imagine this Amber being abused that way, the woman that kicks dudes in the balls and blackmails stupid freaking high school bullies, you think she's gonna be susceptible to that? She's gonna have that level of vulnerability? Because remember, she's a strong black woman and she don't need no man, mm-hmm. That ain't, that ain't happening. I can't imagine they do that with her. And if they do, I tell you one thing, they won't race swap the dude who, uh, who hits her because there's no way they're gonna race, race swap that dude to someone who's not white. If he, if that does go through, she's definitely gonna date a white guy who hits her, obviously. Yeah, I mean, that's basically it. My biggest concern is that they're gonna keep this Amber around longer than she actually needs to be here in the comics. Again, I could be completely wrong. Actually, I hope I'm wrong because, and like I said, there'll be spoilers in this conversation. I'm waiting for the Eve Mark hookup because that is, that's what Invincible is all about right there. That is a core part of the story. So anyway, again, Thanks for listening. If you disagree, that's fine. And I will see you guys in the next rant.